There we go, there's another fish. There we go, that's a little bit heavier fish, guys. We got lots and lots of bait. How's it going, guys? Welcome to the Cameraman Ron channel. Appreciate you guys joining us for another fish adventure here in beautiful Pensacola, Florida. Got some live shrimp on board today and just gonna kind of go out, spend an afternoon on the water, see if there's anything we can get into. Maybe some mangrove snapper, redfish, trout. All those fall species are really, really starting to heat up. So we're gonna take some live shrimp out, put them in the water, put some fish on the deck and maybe, just maybe, find something we can take back and cook up for supper. First fish of the day is not what we're looking for. We do not need lizard fish in our life. You can get a belly. I ain't scared to give a lizard fish the belly though. Fish number one on the day. Little old gnarly lizard fish. Guys, we got lots and lots of bait fish right over here. We might get the cast net out here in just a minute and see if we can't cast net some of these dudes. I just don't know if they're quite big enough for the cast net. That's the problem. Did I eat my shrimp already? It did. Golly. All right, we're going to throw a cast net on these dudes. Might have been the best throw I've ever had with a cast net. Not sure if we got any bait or not, but. Uh, we got a couple in there. I'm seeing a little bit of a flash. We definitely got a couple. On. That's what we're looking for. Right species, wrong size. Need him to be sized up just a little bit from where he's at right there. Because uh, he is a little small, but that is the species we're after right there. We just need his big brother to come out and play. And all I'm doing right here, guys. We've got a strong, strong outgoing tide right now. So I've got a really, really light jig head on. I think like a 16th ounce. Um, and what I'm doing is trying to cast up that way and just kind of let that shrimp float naturally with the outgoing tide. Oh, that was a good bite. And hoping that something will come around and see it. And with that nice natural flow, we'll gobble it up and we can get one to put in the boat. Um, that's not good. My whole hook just broke. Huh. Was not expecting that right there. definitely mangroves in here guys just got to get some of these bigger ones to commit and eat these shrimp there we go there's fish on might be a little bit better mangrove no not much bigger just in that same little like eight nine inch range which is not what we're after at the moment There we go, our fish on. Come on in here, buddy. Little, that's the biggest one we've caught all day. 
we'll get a measurement on him he might be 10 but i still think he's going to be just a little bit short we're going to at least measure him and see here oh yeah he's he's well over 10. so that dude is about a 10 and a half inch mangrove target species acquired let's get him back here in the well There we go, there's a fish. That's a decent one too, guys. Is that gonna be a Trotsky? No, just a little rat red. Pretty little rat red right here. Y'all check this out. Dude's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven spots. Beautiful little red fish. See you, man. Well, there's going to be some redfish hanging around. We might need to see if tie on just a little bit bigger shrimp. I knew if that was a big, you know, if that was a mangrove, it was going to be a doozy. There we go. There's another fish on. Oh, it came off. Dang it. Nice little bite right off the bat. Not much left there. Let's... I don't think we're going to pick anything up on that, but we can sure try. I was getting ready to say, if something does eat it, it has to eat the hook because, oh. What in the world happened right there, folks? That was a decent fish. And I'm not gonna lie to y'all, I was trying out a new knot and I think the knot just failed me. There was not enough pressure there for that fish to come off. There we go. There's the fish on. So it might be a little better, guys. What is that? Oh, it's a red fish. My gosh, it took me a minute just to figure out what that was. Guys, this dude might be slot. If he is 18, he is coming home with us. Simmer, bro. This dude might be a slot redfish, guys. He's gonna be right there. Let's go up here and get a measurement. Guys, he is like 18 on the nose. But I don't wanna, I don't wanna kill a, an 18 inch redfish man that'd be good eating hopefully there'll be more where he came from see you buddy like he was like he was literally 18 like tail to nose he was 18 but i like to have a little bit more of a comfort range and just nose to tail touch and i'd rather see him over just a little bit and tied on a popping cork for that one so maybe that'll be the trick we're gonna put it back out there and see if we can catch this one just a little bit bigger all right guys i am trying out a new battery today for gopro made by a company called first power they did send these over to me they reached out to me and before i took them i did a little bit of research on them and the one thing that i noticed a couple different people said that these batteries don't freeze your gopro up as much as the regular gopro batteries do now whether or not that's the case i'm not 100 percent sure 
don't know the, about the life on them. So we're going to kind of test them out today and just kind of see if they last as long. Uh, maybe if they freeze up a little bit less, which would be absolutely amazing. But we're going to throw these GoPro batteries from First Power in here and give them a go and just kind of see what happens with them. There we go, there's another fish. That might be another red, guys, maybe. He's definitely staying down like a red. Definitely another red fish. Not as big as our last one, though. Come on, buddy. I did the right thing and let an 18-incher go. That should get me some kind of credit for, you know, the fishing gods and catch a keeper. See you, dude. There's another fish. Maybe a mangrove that time. No, 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 no. We're going. We're going in the wrong direction, guys. I don't know what's happening right now, but I did the right thing, and I let your uncle go. So you go tell granddaddy to eat a shrimp and now we're getting nothing but like little babies that's not how it's supposed to work y'all you know if you do good things you leave a, a right there fish let him go You're supposed to you know have good luck that's not how this is working out it's a good bite guys good bite I feel like the popping cork has been the way to go. Ever since I tied on that old voodoo popping cork, man, it's been nonstop action. I mean, every time. And I, if, I feel like the pinfish are staying away. So maybe those pinfish are all the way down on the bottom and having this popping cork, keeping it up elevated, is keeping it away from those little bitty tiny fish. Because most of the bites I've had have been good. And of course I caught that little bitty baby red, but I'm not complaining. I think the popping cork is the way to go right now. There's another fish maybe a little bit heavier fish it's gonna be a red i think but not a keeper if it's a mangrove it might be a keeper oh it is a mangrove i think he's gonna be just a little short there folks little short about an eight inch mangrove snapper see you dude There we go, there's another fish. Man, I'm telling you guys, ever since we switched to popping cork, we have been wearing the fish out. Now, we definitely pulled in some little small rat reds, had that one keeper that we let go, unfortunately. But uh, lots and lots of fish being caught on this popping cork for sure. Another little pretty rat red. See you, buddy. There's got to be another keeper redfish there, guys. There has to be. There's no way that was the only one. No way. There we go. That's a little bit heavier fish, guys. Come on, buddy. A little bit heavier fish here. Guys, another nice red fish. Gonna be just under slot. That's probably gonna be 13, 14 inch red right there. Not as high. Oh, I'm really regretting letting that one go, to be honest with you. He could be in the cooler right now, being prepared for supper. But uh, we let him go and that's that. But we're gonna get a measurement on this dude just to see where he's at. Yeah, that's a 16 inch redfish right there, folks. Nice, pretty redfish, 16 inch, nice blue tail. Gorgeous, gorgeous fish. We just need him to size up just a touch. See you, buddy. I don't know if y'all can see all this bait down here or not, but there is 
tons and tons of bait moving around. My guess is probably a little finger mullet. I would throw the cast net again, but I'm worried that we're just too too deep right now to try to throw it because it's we're in about 14 foot of water right here. It would never get to the bottom and get on them, I don't think. There's another fish. Come on, be a mangrove. If it's a red, it's not big enough. It's going to be a mangrove. Or no, it's not. It's going to be a stupid pinfish. That's the first belly cuda we've caught all day. And considering how many of them are down there, that ain't bad. Simmer, buddy. If I'd kept that redfish, we were going to do it on the half shell. That's almost why I didn't want to keep one that small. I wanted more in like that 20 to 24 inch range and a little fatter. That was a skinny fish. Um, I, I said I regret not let, not keeping it, but I really don't. Like that really was not a fish that I would want to keep. There wasn't enough feed on him, I don't think, to, to justify keeping him. He was a pretty skinny fish. So I think what I'm going to do, I've only got one or two shrimp left here. I think we're going to take this mangrove that we got in the thing back to the house. And I think I'm going to try to make myself a fancy fish sandwich. It's been a little while since I made just a straight up fish sandwich. Maybe make some homemade fries with it. There's another bite. Um, and just fry us up a little, maybe even buffalo. Maybe we'll do a buffalo fish sandwich. I don't think I've ever had a buffalo fish sandwich. Now, I've definitely soaked fish in Frank's Red Hot Sauce, but we might actually dab a little bit of buffalo sauce on top of it. Maybe some tartar sauce, I don't know, but but unless we catch another fish before we head back, I'll see y'all at the kitchen. Getting ready to head back up to the boat ramp, but I did want to let you guys know those first power batteries, number one, my GoPros never froze up whatsoever with them in there. Now, I'm not saying that that's because of the battery. It's just, but I don't think I've ever went that long without one of the GoPros freezing up on me. I'm going to be honest with you. So I'm anxious to continue to test these things out to see if they really, really do. Um not freeze up like the the traditional gopro batteries do a um, couple things about them they do come with a really cool little charging case i believe they come in packs of threes i got a link down in the description box below again this is not something they're paying me to say i just i picked these up and i was like hey these, these might be all right especially if they make the gopro freeze less anything that makes these gopros freeze less i'm all about record time um i felt like i'll go back and check the footage but i feel like I got just as much record time out of these as I do the white um, GoPro batteries, which are supposed to be the prolonged ones, um, which I've never had to complain about GoPro's battery life, just strictly their freezing. But so far, so good, man. Like, I'm pretty impressed with these first power batteries. So if you guys are looking for just a little bit cheaper option um, for your GoPro batteries, I got a link down in the description box below. Go check them out. They, uh, they seem like they're working pretty well. Now, I've not put them to a longevity test yet. Um, obviously, this is the first time I've used them. I just got them. So... But hey, anything I can do to save money while I'm out here on the water, I'm all about it. And GoPro batteries come and go. They die after a little while. So, you know, if you can get those for a little bit cheaper cost, I'm all about it. So y'all check them out. We're going to head back to the house. We're going to cook up this mangrove snapper. We're going to make ourselves a fancy fish sandwich. Let's go. All right. So back at the house, first thing we're going to do is make us some homemade tartar sauce for our fish sandwich with all of these ingredients right here. It is a killer tartar sauce, one of my absolute favorites. So let's put this in a bowl and mix it up. All right, first thing we're gonna do is about a half cup of mayonnaise. Gonna come in and hit it with a little bit of Dijon mustard. Then we're gonna come in and add some relish. Now, some people will tell you to put dill or dill pickles in here, and you can do either one. Um, I prefer sweet relish, but you can do literally either one. And then you're going to come in and you're going to add just a little bit of Worcestershire sauce. Do y'all like how I said that right there? So clean, so smooth. We're going to slide that back for just a second. We're going to make one cut on our lemon right here. We're going to add some fresh squeezed lemon juice. To that that's going to give it that nice little kick just that right there and i did the tartar sauce first because all tartar sauce in my opinion is going to taste better chilled so i did the the sauce first we can go ahead and just top that in the refrigerator for a little bit all right taste this time that's pretty dang good right there 
Heck yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and get our indoor fryer set to 350. And then I feel like some homemade French fries. It's just me here today. The PYT's out of town, so we're gonna make some homemade French fries to go to our fish sandwich. We got tartar sauce made, french fries are cut, now we got a batter of the fish, and we're gonna put it down in the deep fryer. And I think we're gonna cook the fish first and then the french fries, just cause I'll need to let the fish cool off just a little bit anyways. So, uh, it's gonna be good. And y'all know, we always hit it with that hot sauce binder right there. Cause that's how we like to do it. Frank's red hot sauce, put a little binder on it. And we're gonna put it over here. I just did like a pre-bought fish fry today. I didn't do any kind of uh, special homemade batter. I just kind of did a, a pre-store bought one. I can't even remember what it was called, but didn't need anything fancy for this, but make sure we get that good and in there. Our fryer is heated up. I'm gonna take that and put it right over there. Let me grab our fish. Right there, number two, right there, and we drop her in the grease bath. Those dudes are frying up nice. Mmm, that's gonna be good. Time to throw in the pinch fries. Mm-hmm. Hand cut fries for the win. Ooh, doggy. All right, so I guess the sandwich actually was not that fancy. But, I mean, we got hand cut fries, homemade tartar sauce. I did keep me a piece of fried fish off of the side. Mm, let's just sit down and give it a go. The sandwich ended up not being quite as fancy as what I thought it was going to be. I was going to put some lettuce on it and all that, but when I realized that that tartar sauce has so much flavor to it. I was like, I don't really know if I want to like mess this up. So I went ahead and just went with that. Got a piece of fried fish and then the fries, man. What I do with my French fries, I hand cut them and then I come in and I hit them with just a little bit of butter. I know, not healthy. And then I hit them with that Cajun two-step from Uncle Cracker. And man, you won't get better French fries. Not right there. I mean, they're like out of this world good. So we're gonna start off first. I realize it's been a while since I've just had some straight up mangrove snapper. Man, that looks really good too. Mm. Man, in my opinion, fresh mangrove snapper is like literally probably one of the best inshore fish you can eat. Now, you'll hear some people say they don't like black snapper. But a lot of those guys are talking about the big ones that you get offshore. I've heard they're not as good as these smaller inshore ones. But this right here is what's up, y'all. That tartar sauce. That breading's actually really good. I was telling y'all there at the beginning that all I did was just uh, um, like a store-bought breading. I'm going to have to look and see what kind it was because it was really, really good. Oh, my gosh. Y'all, if you could taste this through television right now, you'd be in heaven. Seriously. That tartar sauce with that breading, oh my gosh. That might be the best fish sandwich I've ever made myself. So good, golly. Of all the times for Sarah to miss a catch and cook, she misses this one. She missed out. But in all seriousness, Sarah had to make a run up to Kentucky. Um, a little bit unexpected, but she'll be back very, very soon, probably tomorrow. We're missing her like crazy. Got both the boys here with me. Guys, that's all I got for you on this one. I'm going to sit here and finish enjoying the lunch. Again, everything we talked about in today's video is linked down in the description box below. The First Power Batteries, Voodoo Popping Corks, everything's linked down there. If you guys are interested in any of that, feel free to go down there and check it out. I truly appreciate each and every one of you for all your love and support. Thank you all so, so much. We could not do this without you. Guys, make sure you find a way to make somebody smile today. You never know. 
It just might change the world. We'll see y'all on the next one. Y'all take care.